As we get closer and closer to the mid-set finale, the list of qualified players has continued to grow. Last week, 128 players fought for 16 spots in the mid-set finale. Among the victors was Jirachi, a player that some may recognize from their incredible set 4.5 last chance qualifier run, where they fell just short of qualifying for Worlds. Jirachi has shown time and time again that they are a tournament threat, and if you sleep on them, you might as well start packing. So let's take a look at how Jirachi's game plan enabled them to win their Day 3 lobby at the Nightbringer Cup. To start off, let's take a look at carousel priority in Jirachi's games. In the majority of their games, Jirachi looked to start either belt or tier. There were three reasons for this opener. First, having a belt opener enables players to slam strong early game items such as Warmog, Sunfire, and Redemption. Jirachi's playstyle can definitely be categorized as aggressive, as they typically look to slam early items even if it costs a valuable component such as a tier or a rod. We'll talk about it a little bit more in the mid-game, but Jirachi's play seems to favor mid-game health over economy, so playing around strong openers is a key to their success. Secondly, Jirachi wanted to position around Lux or other redeemed boards, making a tier start very valuable. Thirdly, Tier starts typically reward flexible boards, as it can be used in a variety of frontline, utility, or offensive items. Now that we understand a standard Jirachi opener, let's move on to how Jirachi played the mid-game. In a meta where many people hard commit to their comp based on their opener, Jirachi had the opportunity to play into one of their biggest strengths. Many people consider stage 4-1 to be one of the most important stages of the game. It's the part of the game where many people in a lobby will be rolling down and trying to hit their key upgrades. More often than not, many players have already committed hard and are only willing to pick up units from their original plan for fear of taking too much damage during the transition. But this is where Jirachi stands out. Take a look at this 3-2 board. The Abominations, the Sojin, most of what's here says that it's an Abomination game, but Jirachi sees a different angle. They have good Abomination items, but they have great Redeemed items. So rather than playing out the game around Abominations, Jirachi prepares to pivot. Look at the difference between Jirachi's board at 3-6 and 4-1. These might as well be two different games, and it's that willingness to say, I know I can roll quickly and build a strong board that really separates Jirachi from the field. Finally, let's break down Jirachi's approach to the late game. Just before, we were talking about how Jirachi is comfortable pivoting on large rolldown. This not only speaks to their ability to think ahead, but also speaks to their micro. And when it comes to the late game, you can bet that this ability to micro comes into play. Late game positioning oftentimes can win or lose the fight, and being able to make small adaptations to your board to maximize your chances can decide whether you top or bottom four. In game two of the final day, Jirachi ends up in a 1v1 against Nubowl. In a match with three Zephyrs in play, last minute positioning is huge. After scouting Nubowl's board, Jirachi swaps four units in the final second of the planning phase, making it so that Nubowl can't Zephyr Draven, ultimately enabling Jirachi to earn a first and eventually win the entire lobby. This expertise in the mechanical side of TFT is something that we don't often get to see, but when we do, it brings out a whole new side of the game. And this is the side of the game where Jirachi shines. On July 15th, 32 of the best North American TFT competitors will battle it out in the mid-set finale. This look at Jirachi's play is just a taste at the high level of competition we'll be seeing at this tournament. With the skill level of this tournament being so high, you definitely won't want to miss it. Be sure to follow Giant Slayer online and subscribe to our channel for more TFT esports coverage.